we discuss font sizes, we can take inspiration from nature. In fact, as people started observing nature, they started realizing that proportions were being repeated in lots of places. So whether it's this seashell or whether they're looking uh, here at this pattern or even at a flower, they could see that patterns were repeating. Well, the first person to really notice and document this was Leonardo of Pisa, also called Fibonacci. And he noticed that these proportions are repeated throughout nature. In fact, it's confounded many scientists to wonder why are these repeated in so many places from the human face to nature to all kinds of places these proportions are repeated. So there's something attractive and beautiful about these particular proportions. So we have a simple formula that can represent these proportions. So we start off with the number one, and then we add these two numbers here, one plus one, we put them down here, and that's the number, of course, two. And then we have one plus two is three, so we're adding these, and you can see that we're taking this last number here, and we're just adding these last two numbers here. So I'm just repeating these, putting them down here, and adding the new number. So I'm repeating this pattern here. You can see I take 2 plus 3 and just putting it down here and then adding it to be 5. Then we have 8, 13, 21, 34, and 55. And we could keep going and going. Well, these numbers right here, they make up the Fibonacci sequence. And this is a... Um, beautiful sequence of perfect proportions that is repeated throughout nature. So if you're looking at that shell again, here we go. It's right there in these proportions. So how can we use these in fonts? Well, you obviously don't want to have a one-point font or a two-point font. These are really, really small. But let's say, following our advice, that we can only use three font faces in a document. We could pick 13, 21, and maybe skip up and put 55 together, and that would be just fine. But you know, these are kind of odd numbers, and I'm not really crazy about a 13, a 21, and a 55 together in a printed document. So we can do what is called interpolate these numbers. So here's how we do this. We can take the numbers from up here, and we can put it and adjust these numbers by this amount. So let's say I really want to use 12 point. Well, I can just put it in um, and find some smaller numbers and some larger numbers. Or if I wanted to, I could add 12 plus 1 and then 13 plus 2 and do it that way. So interpolation just means we take the formula down and we just add it together to come up with a new set of numbers so that we can find the perfect font sizes to go together. So what does this look like? Well, first of all, you need to remember that all fonts are, are not the same. So 28 point in Adobe Ming here is not going to be the same as Arial Rounded or Agency or Andahu or Rush Script. So it's not like you can really use these together. And our rule of thumb is no more than three font faces per document. So this is where it can get a little tricky because technically a font is an individual typeface and font size. So Times New Roman 12 is considered one font, and Times New Roman 28 is technically another font face. Um, typeface is technically different types of, of typefaces. The problem is, in the real world, largely because we're using fonts now, we just call them all fonts. But we can't have any more than three fonts per document. So let's look at what that looks like. So let's say that I was going to pick 62 and 28 and 12 together. Well, this may or may not look great um, just because of the different styles. So I'm using Adobe Ming, Adobe Ming, and Arial Rounded here. And you typically want to limit the number of different types of fonts. And in a previous video, we've already gone over font theory uh, somewhat. So I could do it this way. And this might look okay if I knew what I was doing. But let's say I'm just using the same font. This is Georgia, which is one of my favorite fonts. I could just take um, and say, okay, 41 is going to be the heading, 28 is going to be the subtitle, and 12 is going to be the body. And this is really the simplest way to know that I have it looking really good together. 
And you can always search on the internet for the perfect font pairings. Um, there's lots of people with opinions on this, lots of discussions. Um, and again, we've talked about um, font theory. They call it super families here. Uh, we call it categories. So do try to pick from different categories. For example, a sans and a serif. Um, there's other ways to do that. But just be real careful that you have contrast and you don't have conflict. And conflict happens when you have fonts that are too similar in style um, being used together. Never stop learning.